Chapter Eleven: of The Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bria Snow. Chapter Eleven: Reasoning and Originality. I know not why a young woman should not reason correctly as well as a young man, and yet I must confess that somehow or other a masculine seems to be often attached to the thought of strong reasoning powers in the female sex to say of such or such a young woman she is a bold and powerful reasoner would it not be a little more uncommon would it be received as a compliment would it not be regarded as a little out of the way and to coin a term rather unfeminine perhaps the habit of boldly tracing effects up to their causes and of reasoning upon them is a little more uncommon among the young misses of our boarding schools of our more fashionable families both of city and country than among those of the plainest sort of people certain it is at all events that the former would be regarded as reasoning persons with much more reluctance than the latter and yet the former has probably been taught mathematics and all those sciences which are supposed to develop and strengthen the mental faculties and give energy to the reasoning powers for myself i have many doubts whether we are really or for the sex themselves are i mean so much the gainers by the superficial knowledge of modern days which tends to the exclusion in the result of that good old-fashioned education the housework which was given by the mothers of england in the days of her primitive beauty and glory then were our young women for the times reasoning women then were they good for something a few of those precious relics of a comparatively golden age have come down nearly to our own times i have even seen several of them since the beginning of the nineteenth century there is one of this description more than eighty years of age now living with a son of hers in one of the middle states her sphere of action however in the days of her activity lay not there but on one of those delightful hills which are found at the termination of the green mountain range in new england there in her secluded country residence among plain people and with only plain means with her husband absent much of the time she educated not instructed merely nor brought up at school but educated a large family of children most of whom lived to bless her memory and the world so devoted was this woman to her household duties and to the right education of her family that for eleven of the first and hardest years of her life she never for once left the hill on which she dwelt a mile or so in extent and yet this female was a woman of reasoning power superior to those of most men she understood thoroughly every ordinary topic of conversation and could discuss well any subject which came within her grasp she has been for a few years past one of my most regular and most valued correspondents and nothing but her great age and great reluctance to put pen to paper would i presume prevent her from writing more frequently than she is accustomed to as a specimen of her style i venture to insert a paragraph or two from her letters the first was written when she was in her eightieth year i am glad to find you in the enjoyment of health able to be busily and usefully employed for this and coming generations i would like if it was god's will to be usefully employed in such ways too but though i am so greatly favoured as to be able to think as well as ever i cannot labour with my hands so as to have to give to him that needeth because my hands are weak and lame once i could fill six sheets of letter paper in a day without weariness but now if i can fill this sheet decently in two days i am ready to boast of it as an achievement when i look back and see my former activity i wonder if that was myself and am almost ready to doubt my identity but everything in its course first rising into life then decaying the world itself is not to stand for ever and of course the things animate and inanimate which are upon it must partake of its transitoriness again when she was in a few weeks of eighty years of age which was in january eighteen thirty eight she wrote to me in the following vein of playfulness as i can invent nothing new i must utter such truisms as i have picked up by the way in almost eighty years for you say to me right and of course i obey and scribble on now i say to you and may say it to mrs a too write write very sensibly by the way for old as i am i am a sharp critic i read in my early days lord kames's elements 
and have been working up these elements ever since and if i cannot invent i can understand what is fairly presented to me so you will receive this as a caution but don't be afraid i'll tell you another thing of which perhaps you are not aware i had rather have one letter warm from the heart than a dozen from the head i was delighted to think you were pleased with my philosophy for i never dreamed i uttered any as to my politics i was pretty well drilled in the school of washington after seeing through the revolutionary struggle and that was no mean school i assure you washington was a statesman i see but few now but when i do see one i make him my best courtesy and as to my theology i learn that from the pilgrim fathers now whether those of my younger readers of a new generation who perhaps almost despise both letter-writing and reasoning whether any of these i say will see either form or comeliness anything in writing in these paragraphs i cannot say but i can tell them at once that i do and it sometimes seems to me that no greater human benefaction could be offered to mankind than the application of those principles and methods of female education in family and school which would produce such minds and bodies as those of which we have in the case of this aged woman as her example perhaps however it is almost useless to hope for better times at present for reasons among others which are given in another place by my aged correspondence the mischief nowadays she says is that every one is on a railroad impelled by steam power and cannot stop so all speak at once and none hear what a state this is but it is true of the world in general i see but few who are self-possessed i wonder when i see any one who is so and i wonder if i am so myself but we are not only unwilling to stay to hear we are unwilling to stay to teach it would be no hard matter for parents and teachers especially by beginning early to establish in the young of both sexes habits of right reason i am afraid however that parents and teachers themselves do not perceive the value of such a habit and that they are not likely to do so for some time to come all however which remains for me to do i must do this is to press upon the few whose ear i can gain the importance of this part of self-education do not despise the idea of reasoning on subjects which come before you nor think it masculine or old-fashioned not only accustom yourselves to reason but to reason on everything there is almost as great a difference between a young woman who takes all things upon trust scarcely knowing that she can use her own powers in the investigation of truth and one who has been like my worthy and venerable correspondent in the habit of observing and reasoning seventy or eighty years as there is between a sam patch and a bowditch or a hottentot and a newton would that our young women knew this and would conduct themselves accordingly there is nothing in the wide field of human improvement which better repays the labour of cultivation than the reasoning powers nor is there any thing which does more to perfect and adorn the human being with the highest and noblest rational powers the human family especially the female part of it seems to me to accomplish least happily the great work for which they were created than any other earthly existences the little all of knowledge which pertains to the lower animals flows in at once says dr young whereas were man to live coeval with the sun the patriarch pupil might be learning still yet dying leave his lessons half unlearned and yet the former fill happily the sphere which god in nature assigned to them while the latter with all his capacities and powers of reason conscience etc wanders incessantly from his orbit and must be a most insightly spectacle to god and holy angels and all other high and noble intelligences when will man return to his native sphere and the moral and intellectual world move in due harmony and happiness like the physical when will each moral creation of the divine architect move round its great spiritual centre with the same beauty and majesty and glory which is manifest in the motions of the physical world never i am sure till mothers and teachers who are as it seems the authors alike of human happiness and human misery come up to their appropriate work and never will there be such mothers until young women are better trained and the latter will never be trained till the work of education especially of self-education 
is undertaken with much better views of its objects and ends and with a thousand times more earnestness and perseverance and i might even say enthusiasm than has yet been manifested end of chapter eleven